In other news, the Israeli High Court of Justice may finally have a solution of sorts for the highly contentious eviction cases in the Jerusalem neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. The justices reportedly addressing a packed courtroom on Monday to deliver what they believe is a compromise proposal. But in such a controversial and now highly politicized environment, no solution is likely to be accepted by all. So what is this compromise and how will it be received? Joining me with the details, former chief military prosecutor for Judea and Samaria and director of legal strategies for Palestinian Media Watch, Lieutenant Colonel Maurice Hirsch. Lieutenant Colonel, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much. What exactly is this new compromise? Hi, good afternoon. And the idea of the court is basically to say what we already know, that the land in, on which the Palestinians are living is land that belongs and is owned by Jews, and that the people who are on that land as tenants in any other place in the world, when you are on the land of someone else, you need to pay rent. That rent had been paid before until the Palestinian Authority really interfered and persuaded the residents to stop paying the rent. Um, and now the suggestion of the court has been to really revert to the initial situation where the tenants were paying rent in order to stay in the property that they are renting, um, just like any other tenant would do in any other rental case. So, you know, how is this really different from previous rulings then and, and agreements? Doesn't this, in a sense, just pass the buck down the road? Well, no. So, so what, was, what the court is saying, really, is that it's saying, really, to the Palestinian petitioners that we are going to decide that the ownership of this land belongs to the Jews who are, who, who are, who are demanding restoration of their property rights. There is no question that the land on which the Palestinians uh, uh, um, have settled is Jewish-owned land. There are pictures and documents of that propriety ownership going back for, for already for, for, for at least 100 years. Um, and, and so it's impossible for the court to say that we are not going to give those, those owners their rights. On the other hand, they're saying to the, the, the tenants, if you wish to stay, then you need to behave like tenants in any other place. You need to pay rent. So it's not really kicking the, 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 the ball down the line. It's saying, well, this is the situation. In the situations like this, this is the, the practice. If you choose not to pay rent, then you must take the, face the consequences of possibly being evicted from, from, from these properties. And so we are suggesting that you pay rent. It's a, the rent that the, the court is suggesting is very, very minimal. It's, a, it's something just, a, just over 100 shekel a month. Um, which, to put it in dollar terms, is something like thirty dollars a month for an entire party. That's that's not a lot of money. Right. It's a serious compromise. The, the The problem is that the, the, the tenants, pushed on by the, the the Palestinian Authority, still have their reservations from that suggestion because they refuse to accept the basic understanding that the land is owned by Jews. This goes back to the laws of the Palestinian Authority. So, so keeping. So, yeah. So, like you said, the, the Palestinian Authority prohibits, you know, any sale uh, of of land to Jews in the in the West Bank or the Palestinian territories. So, what assurances are there? Because again, this is a long time coming. This case has been uh, uh, in the courts for years. What assurances are there that the tenants whose failure to pay rent led to this mess in the first place will start to pay now? There, there is no assurances, obviously. That's why it was the suggestion of the court. It was partly to say to the landowners, you are not going to receive really what you want, which is the eviction of the tenants who have been squatting there for years and not paying rent. And on the other hand, saying to the tenants, you have to pay something. Free land doesn't exist. And therefore, this is the compromise that we're suggesting. Um, and each side is, is, is really free to, to accept it. The Jewish landowners can say, well, we're not willing to accept that, that, exhort, that, that ridiculously low rent. Um, and the Palestinians on their side can say, well, we're not willing to accept Jewish ownership of any land, and therefore, obviously, we're never going to pay rent. That's, a, that's something which will now have to be considered by both sides and to see how this situation can be deflated. But really, the question is, is there any Palestinian interest um, or interest of the Palestinian Authority to deflate the situation, and it appears there isn't. The Palestinian Authority has been using um, the, the, the different proceedings regarding Sheikh Jarrah 
as a calling uh, 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 for all of the Palestinians mm. to rise up and to attack Israelis and to promote terrorism. Right. And for them to now say, well, you know what, it's really just a civilian dispute between a landowner and a tenant is something which I think the Palestinian Authority isn't going to accept. And therefore, they will push to actively not only not deflate the situation, but to actively inflate the situation and to bring it to a to even higher boiling point than it has already been at. All right. Well, we, we hope, as always, that cooler heads uh, will prevail. Lieutenant Colonel, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much.